ladies and gentlemen, we are at the tail end of this journey and just about to crown a winner, the ultimate debater. Welcome to the semi-final round here at the debate circle with me, Stephanie Washera. Our motion for dissection today is devolving the health function is the main hindrance to achieving universal health care in Kenya. Opposing this motion, we have Moy Forces Academy and proposing this motion, we have Alliance High School. May the best team win. First proposer, you have three minutes. Thorn Baraza from Alliance High School, Darest, saith that roses are red, your case is an illusion. There is hell in hello and devil in devolution. And in this case, devolution of the health function is the main hindrance to achieving universal health care in Kenya. Let us join to shun the devil. But first, what is devolution? Devolution is the decentralization of governmental power from a national government to local authorities. In this case, the county governments. Universal healthcare is the model adopted by a country to ensure health affordable and accessible to all people. Hereby, we are not saying we are demonizing devolution. We are demonizing the devolution of the health function because remember there are other functions that have still been devolved. For example, landscape management, for example, education, for example, agriculture. But health specifically is where the rubber meets the road. Let's take a case study, Spain. Spain nationalized all its health functions at the advent of COVID. And in as much as you don't want to talk about it, Spain recorded very good numbers because they managed to curb it. Let us cross over to our, uh, our brothers, Italy. Italy had to bury people on the roadside because they could not manage COVID from their devolved functions. Let us bring it closer to home. At the advent of COVID, we reached a point where we thought having black tea was a cure to COVID. And for that reason, I did not relent to have three jugs of the same. Unfortunately enough, I got COVID, but I got better. In this case, that is what we are bringing to the table. Because a pandemic hits us, and in the case where we have the development of the health function, we are caught like a rat on the highway. And in this case, we have no option. We're, really, we're still languishing. Are we going to go left or right? Because we aren't sure where to go. And here comes, the, here comes the real truth. County governments, or rather now the devolved factors, are not ready. As we said, we are very busy having black tea because my area governor said, hey, you know what, guys, by the way, if and when you have black tea, COVID is going to go away. That is not how to deal with it. Because look at it statistically. ICU beds by 2020, Kwale, six. Mombasa, 16. Kilifi, zero. Lamu, zero. Garissa, six. Waje, zero. Marsabit, zero. Isiolo, zero. Meru, six. And thus, we have devolved the health function, and we are still hoping that you will go to that hospital and get funds. Secondly, rampant corruption. We are corrupting the tenderization proce uh, process where haraka yako ni bati yako is what is going to get you the tender to the county government. Because in this case, imagine someone can go to the extent of wallowing in an entire bathtub full of champagne from the money that was supposed to be able to construct that hospital in your area, which it didn't. But the CEC of health from that county is very busy wallowing in opulence. And in this case, look at the inadequate personnel. We cannot have a devolved function where we have the ratio of doctors as 21.7 doctors to 16 nurses. And as the stipulation for the, by the UN, we're supposed to have 42 doctors to 228 nurses. This is not only a cake, this is not only barbaric, this is detrimental to our society. And thus, let us join hands and realize that in one voice, in one unity, from inadequate personnel to limited technology, to corruption, to lack of readiness in this case, we are not ready to devolve the health function. Thank you very much. Pastor Posey, you three minutes to make your case. I get the fact that man is to error. But I didn't know I had to come here to justify the fact that the evolution of the health function is not the main hindrance to achieving universal health in Kenya. My name is Clinton Tenyola from Moy Forces Academy, here to strongly oppose the motion. So, actually, what is universal health? This is what I, li I like to stress in the motion. Universal health is when people are able to gain access to health facilities when they want it, where they want it, and without financial hardship, limiting them to two factors, accessibility and affordability. In 2010, 
Kenya enacted a new constitution that was based on the devolution of the government. The devolution of the health government was kicked off and launched in the year 2013, just after the general elections in June. I don't think the team proposition actually knows why the health government, the health function was devolved. The reason why the health function was devolved was, one, to ensure citizens across the country have access to basic health care, to curb discrimination expected, experienced in rural areas, and make delivery of medical services more efficient. Clearly, devolution of the health function is the main key that is setting us free from the shackles of not achieving universal health in Kenya. On to statistics. According to an article that was posted by Alex Kime on Camry, we have in Kenya in the year 2014, we have regi the registered medical facilities were 4,929. And in the year 2022, we have 9,696 medical facilities. This is a whopping 4,767 increase in the number of medical, facil medical facilities. You remember what I told you about accessibility and affordability? This is accessibility of health function. This is the accessibility of the health care. <clears throat> in Kenya, also in Kisumu, the availability of medicine improved by 3.4%. And the number of people who are 15 minutes away from a medical facility were 24.1%. 15 to 30 minutes away were 42.6% and 31 to 60 were 25%. What the proposers are overlooking are that we have other hindrances to the devolution to universal health in Kenya. One of them being embezzlement of funds. According to an article that was posted on dailyvox.com, in Isiolo County in January 2015, an audit report showed that 1.2 billion had been earmarked for the purchase of drugs and other medical supplies. Yet, a spot check in hospitals showed a lack of the said drugs in health facilities. And yet, the government records, the government records, indicated that they had been delivered in 2014. Where did this money go? The government clearly shows the records that they distributed this money, the embezzlement of funds. So, how dare does team proposition step up here and say that devolution is the hindrance? Yet devolution is the messiah, devolution is the savior, and devolution is the key to achieving universal health in Kenya. Thank you. Second proposal, you have three minutes to make your submissions. Ladies and gentlemen, I am disappointed. Disappointed because I came here prepared for a battle of facts, only to find that team opposition was thoroughly unarmed. This is due to one single reason. Team opposition came and told us that actually devolution of the health function has more good, brings more good than it does bad. I look at them and I see the only true statement in his whole presentation was his name. How can we even trust his word? And by the way, we only have his word for it. That's his true name. How can we trust his word when he gives us lie after lie after lie after you guessed it, another lie. Correct my math if I'm wrong, but small lie plus another smaller lie, but another smaller lie is equal to a bigger lie. True or true? True. By now, I know the main question in your mind is, what case have I come to settle? I have come to settle the case that devolution of the health function has actually brought more bad than good. They will come here and tell you a myriad of activities. For example, let me take them at their best case, embezzlement of funds. That was by far their best case. Embezzlement of funds is a, actually a disadvantage of the dissolved health function. How? Under the dissolved health function, there are governments that completely ignored the national policy of how to distribute their funds, especially during the COVID-19 period. True or true? True. They come again and say, that actually the angelization of devolution, which is actually the de-evolution, should be embraced. <laughs> I know I also laugh at that, at that same statement. Because I believe under the, uh, under the, fun under the, dis the devolved health function, many things have come across. And correct me if I'm wrong, 
I'll be seated right there. Everything I say is what they will say. You know, the second opposer will say what the third opposer will say. If not, well, another hint why they were not as prepared as we thought they were, isn't it? So the poor budget management came about by handling, handling doctors and health workers payments very poorly. Second, they got less scrutinized budget of allocation processes in the whole devolved health function. Third, corruption and tenderization was at an all-time high since 2013. Since 2002 to 2010, we actually had less corruption than we had since 2013 to 2022 in the health function. And they still say that health devolution brings more good than bad. I beg to differ. They always digress. Another thing, they bring about this long chain of decision making. I want you to imagine, ladies and gentlemen, that every time you had a case, Every single time you had a case, you had to bring it to one, either team opposition, which I prefer you don't do, or two, another whole different analogy that brings a mismatch in a whole ideology. What we say as team proposition is the devolution, the, the, the devolution of health function actually envelops all the states, all the bad things they're going to say, all the vices that they're going to bring out are enveloped in, the, health, in the, the, the devolution of the health function. Therefore, how is that, how is the health devolution not the main cause of the errors we have in today's society? I wish I could rest their case. But again, you already guess my rhetoric. What case? Thank you very much. Second opposer, the floor is yours. Devolving of the health function is the main hindrance to achieving universal health. And in front, standing in front of you today is Hamza Hussein from the great Moi Forces Academy. Yes, we do encourage what the proposition side have said. They have given us the mug full of solutes. Now we are here to give you the solvent to the better solution. But guess what? This solution does not readily dissolve. Because some of these solutes do not dissolve in. So let us give you the better solutes and the better solvents to the better solution. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, hey, hey. I don't encourage clubs between my debates. So here, actually, there is nowhere they stated how their facts affect the affordability and accessibility of the universal health care. So I have nothing to rebut here. I will go into head down first to my point. But before that, I want to clear this air about devolution, because devolution was the solution. How? According to a statistic, a statistic that was written by Dr. Andrews Mulava Mulwa, he says that from the Vision 2030 website published on the 6th June 2021, 93% of Makweni are an hour away from a health facility. And he also states that more than 270,000 individuals are a kilometer away from a health facility. So how does the devolution become the devil? Another, just to spice up onto that, another article written by Kimathi from the Africa Development Volume 42, that is, on the 1st of January 2017, he tells that in Machakos County, they improved the safe delivery facilities by improving providing maternity facilities and giving all primary health facilities a maternity ward and ambulances, something that the national government could not do. Thank you. On to my first point. Corruption. The monster against achievement of universal health. They've tried to tell us how corruption affects us. They've also tried to bring about its consistency both the first proposer and the second opposer. But according to my fact, written by Daniel Suma, Nation Africa, June 29, 2020, he tells us about a scam. He tells us that 1.18 billion grant is offered to the national government. And this because they didn't actually realize that this grant was given to the national government because they were supposed to give it to the county government to um, establish their health facilities. But only 30% is accountable of that money. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a scam and that was how corruption was brought. But the first 
So the first proposer told us that corruption in that the leaders are tucking in the money, and the second proposer came to tell us that the facts of accessibility and affordability are not encountered through corruption, which I didn't actually get. So Stephanie Washira, you don't have to throw your shoe at me because I'm going to let my team proposition here freshly chew the facts I've given them. The proposers of this motion has been, have been tasked with explaining what the traditional system offered to healthcare, that the devolved system does not offer much to the detriment of the advancement of healthcare, while the opposition has been asked to explain how devolution is going to increase, or rather devolution in healthcare is going to increase accountability in the sector. <laughs> Third proposal, you have three minutes to make your submissions. One, devolving of the health function is the main hindrance to achieving universal health care in Kenya. And I must say how hurting it is that we are willing to live the lives of over 53.3 million Kenyans, according to the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, towards such a corrupt system in terms of governance of the universal health care and health care at large. When we talk about health care, we are talking about our lives as human beings. And if we do not mitigate this in the right procedure, then we have a challenge that we are posing to ourselves as Kenyans. So I have been asked a question on demystifying um, the lies about uh, the other team that has, that, has uh, that has opposed this motion. Well, first of all, they have cited evidences from counties like Machakos, um, Isiolo, and Kisumu, which are actually developed counties in our system of governance. Why are we not taking into consideration county, the same same county like Isiolo, which had zero ICU beds by the time that COVID-19 ensued? And why are you not taking into account counties like Masabit and um, other counties in the north, up, north region of our, our, our country as Kenya that do not even have these facilities that you're talking about? Now, you talked about um, having Kisumu um, with 15% of the people are around 15 minutes towards the healthcare facilities. Well, we come here to say, when we're talking about the county system in, in Kenya, we are talking about a wholesome approach and not necessarily to every single county that is already developed. Now, you talked about embezzlement of funds and, and um, in regards to 1.2 million that was uh, handed over to Isiolo, I wanted you to clarify on that. You talk about 1.18 billion grant and 30% of it not accountable that was given to the counties. Isn't that already proposing for us our motion as well as devolving of healthcare function or devolving of the health function is actually the main hindrance to achieving universal healthcare in Kenya. You've also told us to clarify on affordability and accessibility in the kind of format that we are bringing. And so I have these points to advance to you. Counties were not adequately prepared as evidenced by World Bank um, in its inception nine years ago. A poor budget management continues to be one of the main hindrances we have in our society as um, a devolved system. Uh, for instance, handling doctors and health workers' payment has not been fruitful in our society as we know it. How hurting it is that I may have used four years in my Alliance High School, go to do a Bachelor of Medicine, take another six years so that the government does not pay me my salary due in every month when I go to that system of healthcare. This is demoralizing, sorry, demoralizing, the, demoralizing our own healthcare facility providers. And if we are not able to hold them, we will not be able to even advance universal healthcare as we know. Thereby will be hindering accessibility for every single Kenyan. If we do not handle um, the less scrutinized budget allocation by the county governments, if we do not handle the corruption on tenderization, if we do not handle the 47-pronged approach to address UHC instead of a standardized process, and if we do not handle different priorities that each county government is going to have in relation to advancing universal health care, then we will not be able to mitigate it as Kenya. And hereby we stand saying that proposition decides that the main hindrance to this is devolution. And if we get the devolution out of this, then we will indeed envolution our own country. Thank you. My name is Wayne Dasi Omari from Moy Forces Academy, here to strongly oppose the motion that de devolving the health function is the main hindrance to achieving universal health care. The proposers from speaker number one to speaker number three have given us Two issues, corruption, poor budget management. 
As far as I'm concerned, that's not devolution. Those are the other factors, the other factors that are hindering devolution. Because, ladies and gentlemen, there's something else that you said, that you said before devolution was implemented, there was corruption. And then after devolution, the cases of corruption increased. So my question is, was the function of devolution to eradicate corruption or to bring universal health care? There was a question asked by the audience, how will devolution in increase accountability? Again, what is the function of devolution? We are making health care accessible and affordable. We are not talking about accountability here. That was the work of devolution. Now, there is something... You also talked about that when COVID came, quote, we were not ready. We were caught like a rat. Why? Ladies and gentlemen, devolution was not a one-man army that was, come, that was going to come here and take us by storm all on its own. There are other factors that had to be dealt with first. Those other factors are poor Man, poor budget management. Number two, corruption. Without dealing with those factors, there was no way, th there was no, the revolution didn't have a way paved for it to e effectively work. And ladies and gentlemen, look at where devolution works and how effectively it works when you deal with the other factors. In Turkana, before devolution, people had to travel a two-day journey, people, two-day journey to access the nearest medical facility. After devolution, as of now, Turkana has 13 new hospitals, 19 new health centers, and 177 new dispensaries in a span of nine years of implementation compared to the previous national government, which was in charge of this sector for four. 49 years and they did nothing like this. Ladies and gentlemen, look at the workload and look at the time. Devolution is the way. It has worked. And ladies and gentlemen, I want you to look at this analogy because they complain that devolution did not work did not work in the examples of in the examples they had given. We have a chef in a kitchen. This chef wants to make a cake. The objective of the cake, satisfy our, satisfy our quench for sweetness. This chef goes into the kitchen. He doesn't plan his ingredients well. He mixes, them, he mixes them up very quickly. The cake comes, it's terrible, it's horrible. It doesn't satisfy us. Are we blaming the cake or are we blaming the chef? Proposition, we have one minute for closing submission. Allow me to ask that the team opposition be given an Oscar for actually acting like they know what is going on. Because there is no way you come and stand before us and pass the hot potato. We have argued out our case that devolution is a devil. Even as you talk about the Messiah, an angel, the devil was once an angel, by the way. And so in this case, there is no way you come and tell me that the same evils bathed by devolution. You have said it yourself. Corruption incre increased after devolution was put in place. Therefore, you cannot come and blame the evils brought about by devolution and instead of addressing your issue, passing the hot potato. So let us be objective here. And let me advise you, do not blame everybody for your problem. You made it possibly unconscious in your own system. Stop negativity and blame. Your life will change without sickness and shame. And for this reason, shun devolution. Shun devolution. Shun devolution. As he said, roses are red. Your case is an illusion. There is hell in hello. And the devil in devolution. Thank you very much. Opposition, you have one minute for closing submission. We in Dacia for the final time today. Proposers, I quoted what you said. I never said that after devolution, the corruption increased. Quote, and quote, what your second speaker said, not me. Now, 
I want you to look at this analogy because they are failing to understand. So let me use a concept that might be of relevance to them. I'm talking about the problem being the planning prior to implementing devolution. That is why it did not work in those specific counties. And when that planning was done well, it worked. Now I'm going to show you. Now I want you to look at this analogy. Let us take for example, I was planning to pursue one of the fine ladies in the house. And now, I want to talk to this girl. Why? I want to have a conversation with her, know her, and the pleasure of interacting with the opposite sex. And now, I don't plan myself well. Let's say I'm kinky. I didn't brush my teeth. I'm not decent. I'm not presenting a reasonable argument like my proposers here on stage. Now, I go and talk to the girl, and it fails. Now, is the girl the problem or me? Exactly, people. The planning. If the planning wasn't done well, you cannot blame devolution. Devolution came here to fix the problems. And with this, I rest my case. Uh, Alliance boys, uh, Baraza, for you, I felt that you conversed the issues very well. Um, your ending was excellent as well. Um, Telvin, Telvin, you had a very good start, but I felt like you, and your delivery was also very good, but you focused much on the opposers as opposed to articulating the issues from this motion. Uh, to that extent, I felt um, your submissions were very wordy and we got lost as to where was the point. Uh, Leonard, you gave a very good rebut and you you had a very good structure in your delivery from the start to the end. You had an excellent flow. Two people stand out for me uh, for the alliance. That should be Barasa this time round. This is amazing because the last time I checked out, there was somebody else. And Hamza as well from the other team. Congratulations for, to both sides. Now that means this way, if we can see that there's these strong members of the teams, you should be as well as wise to utilize your last minute to have the strongest member within yourselves come probably and punch your last thoughts in a motion. That's up to you as a team, but it's been creative on, on the ground. To Alliance Boys, I had one question. The power of collective bargaining. We have seen that, you know, we are talking about proposing that the oh, devolution, uh, I mean, devolving the health function is the main hindrance. So the question then will be, uh, where is the power of collective bargaining? What has been the status? What about the strikes we hear about? How effective are they? And how have they affected matters when it comes to uh, health and, 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 you know, giving us the services? I felt that Clinton this time around was amazing. He had amazing facts, uh, just, uh, just that part of that confusion. But so I want to congratulate you for, for that as well. Um, Hamza, as always, I've congratulated you with Barasa for what you did. Um, I think Wiry, I think you did, I just need to check on that final ending and the eye contact by good facts as well on the ground. So, all the best to the team. Let's hope we will meet one of you in the finals. We have two scores here. We have 70% and we have 72%. Moi Forces has made a way with 70%. A round of applause for them. <laughs> Making Alliance Boys the winners of this debate with 72%. <laughs> with that, we wind up yet another amazing debate here as the Debate Circle. As usual, there's more to come, so stay tuned. I have been your host, Stefan Uashera, and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>